How to control a motorcycle frame is straight with only basic tools. I'm going to be using a level like this one, a ruler, and a few shims. So you just had an accident with your motorcycle and you don't know if your frame is bent or if it's still straight and you want to control that. Or you just bought that frame on eBay and you just want to make sure it's good. To do that, it's pretty easy. You don't need to have a laboratory working in metrology and very expensive tools. With the basic tools I just mentioned, you can have a very good idea if that frame is good enough. So I mentioned the level. Yes, it can be a very accurate tool. And I want to demonstrate that. Okay, this is my little setup for demonstration purposes. I have my level, a protractor set up on a vise. And the way it's set right now is that when I have zero degrees on the scale right here, I am exactly centered on that bubble. It's exactly centered between those two lines. Now, let's say I have no idea what kind of accuracy I can have with a level like that. Let's say I want to know where the bubble would be when I move one degree, because I don't even know if one degree would show on that. Well, let's see. We're going to go. That's exactly one degree right here. Oh, OK. Well, we have a lot of travel of the bubble and we went past that line. So now we know that level right here shows a lot more than one degree accuracy. That sounds good. Now let's see how many degrees we moved or how many minutes of a degree we moved for that bubble to just be grazing that line right here. So I'm going to go back a little bit. It would be right here. Right now the bubble is just matching with that line. So what do we have? We are 20 yeah, 20 minutes of a degree is where we're lining up. So that means we have a third of a degree between being completely centered to being just touching that line right here. That is precise. That is really, really good. That's what we need to control the frame. So now we know that we can go ahead, use that level, knowing that between being completely centered and touching that line, we have a third of a degree. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now we have an idea of the accuracy of that level. What I did is I set my frame on the table and then I took all the measurements I needed to take. I had great results with that and I really encourage you guys to use a bubble level just like this one. What I'm going to do for the video though is I'm going to use a different protractor. It's a digital protractor here that gives a number on a screen. I think it's more visual. On top of it, this is more accurate. It's the accuracy of this one is 0.1 degree. So a tenth of a degree. And it's more than enough for what we're doing. But I think it's just more visual because there is a screen. So as I'm going, we can check numbers on a screen and really see what I'm talking about at the same time. So how do you set the frame to then take measurements? Every time you take a measurement, you need a reference. If you don't have a reference, you don't have a measurement. My reference on the frame is going to be that swing arm axle right here. I want the axis that goes through it to be completely vertical with the ground. And I want that in every direction, right? I want that to be completely vertical. So what I did is I used the shims, the homeowner wood shims that I was talking about before. And I put them under the frame. It's not stretching the frame. And I have three points of contact. I have one in the front right here, which is really by the bracket where the front stay of the bike goes. So it's right here, one point, and then there is a second point right there at the end of that axle right here. And then there is no contact after that until the very top of the frame where we have the third point of contact. So everything is set in a way that this axis is vertical, and I'm going to check that now. So. I take my protractor and I put it right here. So I can see minus 89.90. All right, why didn't I do 90 degrees? Well, let's go on the other side. So remember, minus 89.90. Okay. Oh, plus 89.90. So if I average the two, it gives me an axis that's really vertical at 90 degrees. The reason is, every time you measure something, you got to make sure at first that it's got the shape you think it has. Obviously, that thing is conic. I think it's cylindric, but it's not cylindric. It's conic. 
So that's why I'm doing the average between the two angles. Let's say I'm going to use engine bolt like this one to make sure it's kind of straight. I'm going to use a ruler. That's why we're going to use the ruler in that video. So a ruler is usually pretty straight. The straightness of it is included in 0.1 millimeter. It's really good. So when you run that, you run that bolt, you spin it and you make it walk or on that ruler, you can check here. I call that the light leak test. I really put a light here facing me and I do that and I check if there is a gap that is not uniform along my axle that's supposed to be straight. That's what I'm checking. And that's what I did for this one here, this, this, and that, and also for that. Let's talk about those right now. What are they? Where are they from? So those right here are brand new. I, I like to buy new bolts. They're brand new. I check them. They're very straight. This one is the one that was on the bike during the accident. I checked it. It's very straight. And this one, funny enough, is coming from my wheel stand where I check for the trueness of, of the wheels to check that it's not bent. And there is no axle going through those two on the Yamaha R1. This is a Yamaha R1 frame. Uh, there is just a bolt here and a bolt there, which makes it very difficult to get anything measurable and like accurate. So that's why I was looking for something that had the right diameter, like this one that goes through this and here. And that's perfect. So it's just lucky enough that the diameter matched. So that's what I have and I checked it and it's, it's very straight and it has to be because it's a wheel stand. And this here is a cold roll tube of, of steel. So it's pretty heavy and that's what I need. You want that to be heavy so it's not tipping when you put the level on it. You want it to keep the same position. And so it goes inside the races of the bearings in the neck of the frame and it's resting inside those races. It auto centers itself and I'm going to be able to put my level on that. So we, we talked about that. We just want to make sure that things are pretty straight before taking some measurements. And we're saying that when we look at this here, we are at 90 degrees. We are vertical, but we don't know yet about this here. So let's check that. If I put my level here, I have minus 89.90. Okay. And then I go here, I got plus 89.95. Sounds good. It seems like we are very vertical. So now that we know that, we know that this one is vertical, that's our reference. Everything we're going to measure, we're going to measure it against this because we're going to measure parallelism and perpendicularity. Talking about being perpendicular. One of the main thing on a frame, on a motorcycle frame, is to make sure that we have the front end axis perpendicular to the swing arm. What it means is that the axis going here through the neck of the frame has to be perpendicular to that one here for the swing arm. When we say that, it's not really true. Nothing is perpendicular because they don't even cross each other. They are completely independent, but the plane that contains that axis and that goes through the middle of the frame should be perpendicular to that axis. All right. So we know that this is really, really close to 90 degrees to being vertical. We are really good here. So when I put that level on that tube here, I should be very close to zero degrees to be perpendicular. So let's see. That is beautiful. Zero degrees. Awesome. That is great, great news. Like knowing that you have that good, that means the frame is not bent in that direction. That means that if you have a good front end and a good rear end, so swing arm and um, a wheel, the rear wheel, if that is good, put on that type of frame, your bike is going to go straight. The bike is not going to pull to the right or to the left. It's going to be straight. So great news. Very happy with that. That's one of the most important things we want to check. And now the other thing we want to check is really to have something parallel. We want to have this one, those three motor mounts, one, two, three, 
parallel to each other and parallel to this one. So really what we're saying now is we want to have all those four axes right here perpendicular to the ground. That's what we're saying. Let's check that. So here I have uh, minus 89.95. So minus 89.95, okay, that's, you know, just keep in mind the accuracy of that thing is 0.1 degree. So when we talk about 0.05, it doesn't make any sense because this thing is not accurate enough to tell us about sense. It just tells us about point the first decimal, not the second decimal. Just keep that in mind. So I, I forgot what we said, but all right. We got minus 89.95 and here we got plus 89.85. All right. So minus but plus 89.90. So we're very good. We're very vertical. Now we're going to check here. I have plus 89.95 and then here I have minus 89.90. This is good. This is vertical. Those mode amounts look really good to me. All right, now we're going to go on this one here. Wow, the right, the right size. Okay, so we got plus 89.95. And we have minus 89.90. <laughs> Looks really good. Okay, and then plus 89.95. All right. I'm very happy with those because we know this one is 90 degrees and those are basically 90 degrees. We're very good with that. Now, let's go ahead and check this one here. Minus 89.90. Stay here. All right. Minus 89.90. Minus 89.80. Okay. Minus 89.80. All right, got that. 90 degrees, 90 degrees exactly. Okay, all right, all the numbers we have are so good. We are saying that the engine is going to sit straight and centered in that frame, and we're not going to have the sprocket that's going to be not lined up with the rear sprocket on the rear wheel, but we're going to have things parallel which means we can have all the horsepowers we, we need. We're not going to like eat horsepowers away because we have something that's not lined up and there is no wear and tear on the chain that we don't want because things are not lined up. Things look really good. That frame is good. You can see that I didn't measure anything in distances. I didn't measure anything in those triangles right here. I could, but there is kind of two reasons for that. The first one is I am the one who took the engine out of the frame. I know the engine got off without the bolts being misaligned. Everything lined up when the engine was good. The engine is good. The, the block is not broken. A block doesn't really distort. It would break. It is cast. In this case, it's cast aluminum. So I know that those are in the good position. And I also see as I'm checking that before the measurements, during the measurements, after, you know, you, you're really checking that frame all the time for cracks or for rolls, you know, kind of like a fat roll. And you could tell like, oh, it's been bent here. There is none of that. Everything is very straight on the surfaces around. It's all good. Okay, so I can really vouch for that frame and I'm going to put the bike back together. I'm very happy with what I saw. I can tell my frame is straight. And this is what you should do if you have doubts. You don't need expensive tools. You just need a level, a ruler, and some shims to just shim your frame on a flat bench. Doesn't need to be flat because you're going to make it flat with your level. So that's really what I wanted to share. If you get any value from that video and you like that type of video, tell me with a like on the video so I know to make some more. If you have any comments, because I know that something sometimes may be a little obscure, just drop me a comment and I'll, I'll answer the comments and let you know what I think of it and maybe explain some more. Want to see me building back that Yamaha R1? You should consider subscribing to the channel, activate your notification, this way you know when I post a new video. I see you in the next one and meantime, keep building.
Perfect.